Welcome to another commentary done by Digny. We're at the bottom left-hand corner. We have Fisheye starting as the purple Protoss. We have Aegis starting in the upper left-hand corner as the pink Zerg. This is going to be on Monopoly, which is called as such because it is a mineral-heavy map. And it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mineral patches. I'm the count now. Ah, ah, ah. 10 mineral patches in the various mains. Hopefully you're not getting too much background audio from where I'm at. You got that base. This is the third spawn. It's I don't think it's an isometric map. It's kind of... Uh, so this, this is a 3 o'clock location. It's not rotated across. The, you got kind of a neat Triforce thing going in the middle. You got double gas, some minerals uh, there, a natural expansion. Uh, this space, which is nearby, but it's kind of just wide open. Really what I feel like this... What the, the hallmark of this map is, is it's kind of the mid-game play around these areas because your units can sometimes end up on the low ground as they're because that's the closest path however if you're diligent about your army control kind of take it this way around it's kind of this area around the third of whoever has map control at that moment that plays a uh, more significant advantage but earlier it's like macro 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 do your do what you're going to do with your probes as far as mineral boosting or your drones mineral boosting looks like we're seeing a overpool i think an overpool or a 12 pool yeah, it looked like an overpool for Aegis here in the upper left-hand corner. Pumping those drones. But being a three-player map and having a little bit more minerals, sometimes it can also encourage a little bit later scouting, things like that, so it can open up shenanigans. And we also have the Zerg eggs, which I don't know why this has been so popular recently. It just feels like the last couple seasons of ladder and maps and everything, the Zerg eggs on the ramp are just like they're expected. And I feel like maybe... the. Is this just like the cap of current map makers? It's like, these are the maps we make. We're putting the Zerg eggs on them. Anyway. Forge at the natural expansion. So it looks like it is going to be a, fir a forge first opener. Still no scouting. Sorry, take it back. The probe snuck through. It's going to drop a pile on to try to blockade the natural expansion. Aegis thought was just going to ignore it. Yeah, he's just going to ignore it and plop down his third rather rapidly. Is producing six Zerglings. Off an overpool. Or sorry, after off this build, because there was no hatchery planted down, I think just because Aegis was a little bit off on things. Oh, cancel pylon. Tried it! Oh, he gets it! So he gets the favorable hatchery. So nice patience there on Aegis's part. Six Zerglings moving out. Looks like they're going to initially do some damage to that probe. That probe going to sneak around, but because of the timing of everything, Fisheye wanting to put down that cannon first should be sufficient. Still might want to... Still might have been wise to pull... Actually, it looks like he's got eyes that these Zerglings are coming back. Aegis being diligent to go ahead and take care of this probe scout. If you can limit... So he sees the, the gas timing, which is right around the three-minute mark, which gives him a good idea of the timing of the Mutalisks and tech. However, he still wants to keep this probe alive because this could still be something like a 973. And that probe just looked like it glitched through the gas somehow. Very clever of moving into the mineral line where you get a little bit more free motion of that probe. So Nexus moving up. Gateway has is there. We do see a gas grab from Fisheye as well. Between these two, I got to favor Fisheye. Just because he is such a strong player. We've seen him in other rounds of Gosu League. But right now, this Zergling has the kill. Which open up oh, opens up options for Aegis. And I think this is a strong 973 map. Because you see there's a decent amount of surface area to work with. This Overlord also going to go ahead and check. And it sees that there's just that one cannon. Might not want to get too close there to not take a shot in the face. Hopefully the random hammering that's happening behind me isn't picking up on the ideal. And it looks like gas not being grabbed from Aegis. So he, he has the gas up, but he doesn't have drones on gas, which leads me to believe he is gonna go a little bit more mineral heavy to get the drones out a little bit faster to maybe go for 973, or maybe even it looks like he is getting Zergling speed or play for some sort of three hatch uh, bus play. First sell it out on the front. Let's see if Fisheye, Fisheye Needs to get something. It looks like he did manage to get another drone scout out. And this is going to be huge, particularly if he can get out into the main. The Zergling's now trying to blockade. He did get a good look to see that there's six and now seven drones moving out to the natural expansion. What he doesn't know is that gas is no longer being mined. Third base is up. Let's see if he can move. He needs to move that probe up to kind of get a good look at the saturation here of the drones. At the third expansion as well, the Zergling's making their way that, uh, that direction. He's going to know that, okay, this is potentially a bust scenario. And sees two drones there already. And I think he might have gotten a glimpse as the vision was clearing out of an additional drone right there. So right now, 
this is going to be hydro this has to be hydralisks either way for ages because he's delayed gas for such a long i don't think that was a mistake he's delayed gas for such a long period of time though that the only way he's going to be able to fend the corsairs off period is dealing with is plopping down hydroden and honestly he needs to pop down hydroden immediately to deal with this and i'm wondering if that's what this drone is being set aside for uh, to deal with, yeah, the Corsairs are going to be in his face. It looks like he's immediately moving to four hatcheries. So he's going four hatcheries and missed the Zealot on the minimap while that was happening. Looks like it got some good disruption here. Creep Colony being dropped. And actually, it's moving back to, yeah, five hatch Idolisk with an evolution chamber back here. The Sutton Colony. This is crazy. If you're a Zealot and you just see the Sutton Colony morphing behind this, like, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's just, anyway, the drones, a little bit of disruption happening here. A couple Zerglings being produced to go ahead... Looks like that Sutton Colony was the thing that wiped him out. And now it's moving into Sim City for Aegis. So Aegis has the Hydral stand up. He's getting the Hydral speed. But that first, first Corsair moving along the way. And because there was that hold of gas that entire time, now this Overlord certainly at risk. Let's see if there's additional Hydralisks that are going to be produced. Looks like this Overlord... I mean, this is... Fish Eyes should get a lot of bonus out of these Corsair. Plus when he gets this plus one online... Might be able to get a lot of damage done. Plopping down... So this... This cannon, a bit unnecessary. I think he was expecting... Th and this is a bit of a mistake for Fisheye. He doesn't need that cannon in the main. I think he was thinking, okay, m I might be going up against that four base uh, spire timing right now. But there's no movement towards lair at all. Maybe he thought the lair was upgraded at the natural expansion. Because he didn't see that gas that period of time. Only a single Hydralisk working against this Corsair. And there are two Corsairs here. Fisheye realizing, okay, this is only a single Corsair, so, or a single Hydralisk, so able to sneak back and continuing to put Aegis in the red. So Aegis now being punished a little bit. We're going so gas light, and now that these Corsair move here, they see, okay, lack of lair at the natural expansion, or the lair being upgraded at the natural expansion. This has to be, Fisheye has to go like, yes, I'm in a, I know what I need to do now, and in a pretty good position, but, so Aegis at 31 workers, has a decent Sim City. This third base potentially walled up. At this stage, I gotta feel like Fish, uh, Agent, or sorry, Fish Eye might feel comfortable going ahead and grabbing a third. Or playing from there. Moving, the Corsair's already taken out a lot of Overlords. That supply capping Aegis as well. Plus one weapons just about to come online. The Dark Templar being produced. Looks like he wants to move into Templar tech. Another gateway popping down. He's just gonna stick to the three Corsair, and I think that's wise. He doesn't need additional Corsair. He doesn't need to pump a huge amount of Corsair with the plus one weapons because he's just working against Hydralisks. So it's got to be that combo attack of distracting the, the Hydralisks underneath. A pro battle probe with these Zealots now moving out. The five Zealots, let's see if they where they can go. There is a something Colony in uh, several Hydralisks here. A decent SimCity, and I think Aegis is pretty well walled up right this second. I don't think Fisheye is going to get a lot out of this attack. It looks like he's still going to touch the front door, and this feels like a mistake to me. Trying to do a distractionary attack. Still might be able to get doing... Oh, loses a Corsair for that effort. Yeah, just poking up around the perimeter, finding nothing. Yeah, if your opponent's going to shell up as much as this, just go ahead and... I mean, if you can go ahead and macro up if you want. But yeah, he's got DT. He's got... They're going to wander out the map. There is... There's going to be a long period of time before Overlord Speed's coming online. Looks like it's just starting to research. So these Dark Templar, especially with these Corsair that were able to clear out a lot of vision should have free ran, but it looks like Aegis is setting up to maybe go for a front door bust. The Overlords are gone here. The Dark Templar are now out of position, and yeah, he's just going to go ahead and dive in. One cannon gone, second cannon gone, and Fisheye is out of position to go ahead and defend this. He's actually moving in with these Zealots and the up upper right-hand corner, and he needs to respond at his main. Where are the Dark Templar? And there's GG from Fisheye. Fisheye... Honestly, it felt like uh, Fisheye was maybe in a good position at multiple points of that match, but kind of having trouble finding his footing and flubbing game one. So Aegis taking it. Well played on his part. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.